G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series. In this video today, I wanted to talk about GPS. I know I've talked about this in other videos and navigation, but I just feel that it's a really, really important topic. And I just wanted to share a few little hints, tips and tricks that I've used with GPS over the years. One of the interesting things is with GPS, and a lot of people regard it as being probably the most accurate form of navigational, navigational system in the world. For that, I completely and utterly agree with them. But it's not perfect, because nothing we produce as human beings is perfect. It all has flaws. And GPS is no different. One of the interesting things is, though, is that you can actually make it work better for you. What do I mean by that? Well, g taking GPS readings isn't straightforward. It isn't actually just go out, press a button and off you go if you're going to do it correctly. One of the tricks I've learned is that you want to fire up your GPS and you want to give it about five to ten minutes to actually locate where it actually is. When you're taking a reading, you want to do it early morning to mid-morning. Round about midday, which is what it is about round about now, the sun's at its highest point, is probably not the best time to be taking a GPS reading. Why is this the case? Well, I'll show you some footage as to why. But the sun itself is made up of hydrogen and helium, and obviously it's burning at an intense heat. With the sun itself, large flares of actual gas, burning gas, actually come off from it. And this is known as a solar flare. And this causes a spike or an increase in the sunlight that actually penetrates through the Earth's atmosphere, or what's known as solar radiation. When this happens, it actually causes a increase in atmospheric scattering, because as light goes through the Earth's atmosphere, it actually bends. It hits dust particles, soot, water, and all the rest, and it can actually scatter. And that's what atmospheric scattering is all about. This could actually cause satellite phones, mobile phones, CB radios, HF radios to actually have a lot of problems in trying to actually communicate uh, during high noon or midday. So taking a GPS reading at this point in time isn't advisable because instead of having an accuracy of up to 5 metres, it can blow it out to 20 metres. And I've had examples where I actually haven't been able to get an accurate reading. So this is where I think it's really important, not necessarily to take a pair of binoculars, but I always do. Get that to sit there. But always to take a topographic map with you. Always take a compass, and always make sure that you know how to orientate yourself with the sun because that actually makes a big difference too. If you can figure out roughly where east is and west is, you're halfway there. So that's something I've learnt too. If you're marking points on a GPS, always make sure that you don't just stop, get out of the car and press the button. Make sure you wait. Make sure you always question the coordinates too and double check it on a map because you can actually get off course quite easily. GPS is the most advanced system for global, global positioning in the world. Obviously China and Russia and the European Union have their own systems too, but they're nowhere near as advanced as the US system. Due to this, any large-scale US-led operations can actually, well they can, actually scramble the, U uh, the GPS signal. And by doing that, it can cause your accuracy to go from 5 metres up to 200 metres. And this actually happened in 2003 with the invasion of Iraq or the second Gulf War, whatever you want. So a bit of a technical glitch out there in the field. But basically what I wanted to say was with the second Gulf War, we saw that the GPS signal became scrambled. And with this, it meant that we could only get a 200 metre accuracy for a GPS reading. Now, obviously, we haven't seen anything like that happen since, but basically what I'm trying to get across is, is that GPS is a fantastic system. It is brilliant, but we shouldn't get too complacent with it. I always try and function on the rule of three, and so I always take a topographic map, a compass, and obviously a GPS with me. And just for backup, I always try and orientate myself with the sun. 
So anyway, I hope these tips and tricks have helped you out here today. If you've got a few tips and tricks yourself, please leave them in the comments section down below. And if you want to support the generation of content here at Seriously Series, please join us on Patreon by clicking on the Patreon icon at the top right hand corner of your screen. And I hope to catch you in our next video.